One of the things I'm going to talk to you about today is hook choice. Now, I always think hooks are massively important. I think feeder fishing really taught me that because it's the difference between hooking up on a fish and not. Um, and I think one of the one of the interesting things is it's the point of contact between you and the fish with the bait as well. Now, a lot of commercial fisheries are heavily fished and um, obviously I always think like the fish are, the fish know the difference. So take what I'm doing today for example, I'm fishing a fishing the awesome uh, Aston Park and I've got a little stocky on here now and these fish are a good example. So for me like a, a stocky type carp, a new carp, pretty carefree to be honest. They'll, uh, they're quite aggressive feeders. They'll, they'll eat pretty much anything going because they've been stocked in the fishery. Look at that absolutely pristine little carp there. And he's not going to be overly fussed by like a heavier, thicker hook. So if I was on a, a fishery where I had some of them, I'd probably pick like a medium strength hook pattern, like a GPM, something like that. But today, I'm fishing for everything that swims, little stockies, um, eyed, F1s, those sort of things, anything really that wants to pick up my bait. And I've got a light elastic on, I've got a five elastic, and I think your hook needs to suit your elastic. I think that's all needs to go hand in hand. So for me, I've got an SFL on today. I've got a 16 SFL. Um, it's probably my go-to hook for that type of fishing. And it's the lightest one of our barbless hook patterns. It's really nice for, I would say, anything up to about two pound. I think once you're getting over two pound, although I know it's a great hook for F1s, I think like if I was fishing for anything from like eight ounce to two pound, an SFL is my choice. Depending on the hook bait, if I'm fishing single maggot, things like that, I'm looking at a 16s. If I'm, uh, if I'm fishing double maggot, then maybe even a 14 can be good. And then like, when you get to the smaller sizes, the 18s and 20s, I've got to be honest, I'm only using them if, if the fishing's really hard. And then maybe I'm fishing a single maggot for one fish and waiting for bites, that sort of thing. Because they're, they're a nice hook, they're, you know, they're, strong, they're certainly strong enough. So that would be what I'd look for for an SFL. And certainly in the winter when I can fish light elastic. So anything like, I'm going to say an eight, an eight or under, an SFL is going to be my choice. Now, <clears throat> if I'm starting to get a bit more than an eight elastic, if I'm looking at, you know, tens, elevens, maybe even thirteens, well, yeah, thirteens as well, then I'm probably talking about GPMs because the fish that I'm targeting are going to be probably, generally speaking, a pound or more, hopefully two to like five, six pound. And a GPM is it, it's very, very, very similar shape to an SFL, which is because we know it's a shape that works so well for commercial fishing. So basically, we just wanted something that was a little bit thicker. The SFL was actually supposed to be a little bit thinner than the GPM. That's how it came about. So the GPM is just that slightly thicker gauge, so if I was fishing like a 16 GPM today, it's a little bit of a thicker gauge. It's actually slightly wider. It's all just a little bit more beefed up. And that means that I can fish with heavier elastics and target fish like carp, you know, bigger F1s, that sort of thing. And most of my open water fishing, when I'm on a commercial in like from spring all the way through to October, I'm looking at GPMs. That's usually my my hook of choice. And then I'm looking to see whether I can make anything a little bit more beefy, a little bit more manly, that sort of thing. And I'll probably be looking for, what have we got here this time? Like look, little skimmer, perfect. SFL, classic, classic fish for those sorts of, of hooks. But then like if I'm looking for something a little bit more, you know, beefy, a little bit more in the edge, proper fish, aggressive fishing, then I'm an XSH. An XSH is a is a really it's a strong hook, but it's not like crazy strong. It's just like I've used it for carp up to like 20 pounds, but when I'm fishing in the edge, and I just feel like today's commercial fisheries, the, 
The fish know, the fish know the difference between a bait with a hook in it or not. It's just whether you can get them to commit to it. So an XSH is a really nice balance and it's great for baits like corn, meat, bunches of maggots, worms, because it's got a really wide gape. And I think when you've got a wide gape on your hook, it just means that the point is more exposed and you're gonna hook more fish when they suck the bait in. And I would say like GPMs and SFLs are brilliantly suited to like maggots. And if I wanted to look at like pellet fishing, soft pellet fishing, I would be using big hooks in those, like 14s, because I need a wider gate to make sure I hook the bait. Maggots are slightly different, that's why you can get away with smaller hooks, but all the XSH, they've got a wide gape, even the smaller sizes. So I often use like an 18 XSH on the method when I'm fishing with like single maggots. It's a strong, wide gape hook where I can get a hook up really cleanly. So when I'm talking about spade end hooks, that tends to be my choice. Of course, for a lot of my feeder fishing, I'm looking at the KKH or KKMs. I love a, a knotless knot. I love something that's slightly kicked in. I think when you tie a knotless knot, your hook kicks in. And what that allows is when the fish picks it up, you prick more fish. And obviously when you feed a fishing, 99% of the time you're looking for a self-hook intake. Float fishing, I'm trying to read the float and I can strike, which is why I think that spade end hook is a little bit better because I'm looking at the, the float and I'm whacking it into the fish itself. So personally for me, I believe that's a better type of of hooks I get a nicer presentation but when I'm feeder fishing I'm a big fan of those sort of eyed hooks and in turn so look SFL doing the business again there a lovely skimmer so think about your hooks look at that he's in he's in great nick ears a lot of these fish look very fresh in Aston Park look great fish look really really nice fish look what a beautiful fish that is probably like 10 ounce so you know when you're out fishing a lot of people, they, they just sort of pick a hook that they like and stick with it. Got to be careful though, if you can match the hook. So just to give you an idea, in my hook box here today, I've got like 010, 011 SFLs. So you can see there, look, 011, 011 SFLB, 013. That's what you're looking for with your SFLs, your GPMs. I'm talking anything from 011 up to 015. So you can see like 015 there on my 14 and 12s. And then your XSH, you're manning it up. You're looking 015, 017, really trying to, your, your more beefy stuff. And they're the pre-tied ones. They're what I carry for a lot of my commercial fishing because we got the grading of line right, but it gives you an idea of what to expect. So when you're looking at like two, three pound lines, which is 011, 013, that sort of thing, up to four pound you're going to be looking at the lighter end of the hooks and as the lines get thicker you need to thicken your hook up as well it does make a big difference to what you end up catching like i said it is the critical point between bait hook and fish so make sure that you're thinking about that and i'm absolutely sure it's going to help you catch more fish